Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Stored Switzerland. This is part of our ongoing series of Chalk Talk videos that we're doing on various subjects in the storage industry. Today we're going to focus on hybrid cloud storage. What is it and what, when does it make sense for you? So hybrid cloud storage is, is another form of cloud storage that um, can be used in larger enterprises typically to get the best of both worlds between private storage and public storage. So let's kind of talk about that. First, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about what public storage is, public cloud storage. That typically is storage connected via the internet or some sort of connection to a local data center. And it typically is used uh, probably for backups, uh, maybe a collaboration tool. Uh, archive is also a big uh, growing use case. Then there's private cloud, which really is taking the concepts that public cloud providers use to be able to provide storage at a very cost effective uh, model and also be able to manage it well, scale it well, things like that and take that kind of architecture and use it in an internal uh, data center. And so it, it's really more of an architectural conversation, typically featuring a lot of nodes and scale out storage and things like that. So what we'll typically see is nodes or servers loaded up with hard disks, all interconnected and then managed as one. And then when you need an additional uh, device or additional capacity, you just add those together as well, and that is a kind of a self-expanding uh, architecture. Hybrid cloud uh, storage is very interesting because it's sort of a blend of both models where we're leveraging a, a local private architecture and uh, being able to, if you will, spill over into a public architecture. So that's really the differences there. So why is cloud storage uh, becoming uh, more relevant in the enterprise? It, clearly cloud storage has been a, a very well adopted in the consumer market. You can't turn on the radio right now with an out, out an ad for one of the various uh, online backup companies. Uh, and we've seen that uh, continue to grow. In the enterprise though, the, the use case is a little bit different. Clearly some form of backup tends to be one of the things that people look for. Uh, but we're seeing a, a rapid increase in the use of cloud as an as a archive storage area where you, you just can't functionally afford to keep all the data that you're now required to keep in a single data center. Uh, storage is inexpensive, new data centers are not. So if you have to go build a whole new data center to store more stuff, that becomes a very cost, uh, costly proposition for you. So to be able to dump that, if you will, into a, a cloud provider becomes very interesting. And the other area we're seeing is sort of a bursting thing. So if you have a project that is very large to start with, you can use the uh, public cloud as, as a, a fill area to borrow storage with. And then when you're done, um, delete that off of there and just keep a copy local. So that's sort of a bursting model. And then finally, primary storage. We're seeing this grow uh, slowly in the environment and, and work its way up in the enterprise. And that's where we might have a traditional storage environment Let's say we had three or well, a bunch of servers connected to a storage network. Traditionally, that would be a on-premise storage device with a, a hard disk system in it. And what we're starting to see that change into is smaller on-site capacity that then is replicated to the cloud uh, as changes occur. So we're starting to see that as, uh, happen quite frequently as well. And I think we'll see that use case continue to, to grow. But let's really look at a hybrid cloud um, as it stands today and where some of those use cases are. So really there's two types of hybrid cloud models that we see. There's what we call the do-it-yourself model and then there's a, an integrated model. And, and interestingly, even though they both fall under the uh, hybrid cloud uh, term, they almost couldn't be more opposite in what they provide. The, the do-it-yourself model is taking that private cloud storage stack, owning it internally, and then really using the public cloud as only a bursting vehicle where you need more storage or maybe a backup copy. 
So that, that, what that means though is that you have to, of course, buy all the capacity uh, on site. It means you have to staff for it and, and find people that know how to manage it and will manage it consistently. Uh, and then just incur the cost of power, cooling, floor space, all the different things that you have to worry about with cloud storage. And for some people with the right amount of staffing and things like that, that could, could be perfectly acceptable. What we're seeing though is more of a use case where they want a local presence from a location standpoint. We just did a case study for uh, Nirvonix where there was a company based in Hawaii, DR Fortress, and they had a unique problem in that they're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and there's nothing really close. So copying everything across the Pacific Ocean essentially to a public a cloud storage device had a lot of latency in it. And, but they didn't want to build their own private cloud and have to hire staff and manage all that. So what they chose to do, and I, which I think is an interesting model, is, is use the ability to, uh, in a hybrid cloud capability, to extend the public cloud into their data center. So let's say this is a data center. And you've got your normal stuff. What ends up happening is you put one uh, configuration or, or, or node setup in your environment, and that essentially extends the public cloud into your data center. And what that allows you to do is have a local point of presence, but have it be fully managed, serviced, monitored, et cetera, by the public cloud provider staff, instead of you having to go out, buy all those assets, right? And employ them and things like that. What that gives you is if you have customers out here or uh, users that are creating content, they can copy lo essentially locally or, or, or you know, geographically locally and see a much lower response time and a much lower latency. And then this, this can now copy it to the, to the more formal public cloud uh, back on, in, in DR Fortress's case, back on the mainland. That becomes very interesting because now once it's into the global public cloud, it could also be replicated to other data centers around the world as it makes sense and maybe as the policy is set up and configured here. So that gives you a global replication capability uh, it also means that uh, under the Nirvonic system, you have a, a single point of access or a global file system. You don't have to know which data center happens to have what copy of what file, which data center is the, the most uh, uh, available to you from a latency perspective, things like that. You just request the file, the environment figures that out and serves it up to you. One of the big differentiators here in, the, in this model versus a sort of the do-it-yourself model is that this is, in the, this integrated model, this is all one service organization, one set of uh, service level agreements, all that uh, sort of good stuff. If you built your own private cloud and then tried to integrate into somebody else's cloud, you can see that there's a huge opportunity for finger pointing because you've got almost two competing interests at that point and it's really hard to figure out who owns what. So unless you were going to invest and build out the entire cloud, which I think maybe could be a possibility for some organizations, uh, that, that's a really hard way to go. In, in the integrated model, since it's all one delivery mechanism, there is no finger pointing around support, maintenance, things like that. It, it essentially is all owned by this public cloud provider. So in, in summary, what we have with this sort of a hybrid cloud model is really what we've done is extended the public cloud into the data center as opposed to the opposite where we're kind of hardwiring a, a private cloud into a public cloud. It, it's just much easier to manage. It allows you to keep costs down. You really are, in, in this model, you really kind of aren't bursting. You are actually part of the overall cloud and you're just using what makes the most sense for you. Again, the applications here can be anything that would be used in a normal uh, cloud environment, so archive, uh, maybe primary storage, bursting, all those sort of things. Uh, but the, uh, the initial access point is much more local since it's in your data center 
and then you have the rest of the environment available as a, as a secondary option. So that is hybrid cloud storage. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Nervonics. You can go to their website here for more information. Thank you.